And here we are. Uh, this is episode 20, Neon Genesis Evangelion. I'm Matt Greenfield. I was the ADR writer and director. And with me is... My name is Sean McCoy. I, you may have seen my panels around the country at various anime conventions. i um, liable to speak for hours and hours until they kick me out about this show. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of the way uh, this title affects people. Uh, one of the reasons Ava has always been so successful is the fact that you can talk about it for hours and hours. Uh, and to the point of fact where uh, even the smallest details uh, can take on multiple meetings. For example... Uh, Sephiroth through the insertion just flashed by the screen. Exactly. Uh, the opening sequence in and of itself probably has more plot hints than uh, most shows will in a couple of episodes. Even the Cruel Angels thesis song, uh, produced in various different ways, uh, the singer right now is slightly ahead of the beat, where the uh, other singers who have done it on the CDs were slightly behind the beat, like uh, when the Rei Ayanami's voice actress did it. Uh, interesting things like that, they, they decide to work in. Mm-hmm. And, of course, in the, the end credits, of course, being sung entirely differently every time. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the coloration of the scene often varying. Now, there's a lot of interesting things that go on. Uh, now, this particular episode uh, delves a little deeper into Shinji uh, as a character than we have in the past. Yes, uh, so the, the uh, Unit 1 is just... Um gone berserk and is in, uh, ingesting the S2 uh, engine, which is basically uh, the engine that would allow it to act without an umbilical cable. Uh, so it's kind of the, if you look at it as the umbilical cable as the strength a parent would provide their child, uh, it's a leash and it's a source of energy. Um, he now is kind of growing out of that, so he's, be he's kind of becoming rebellious youth in a way as he's becoming, uh, as the ever one's becoming rebellious. And just as a side point, note that the hand has suddenly become far more human than it's ever been before. Hmm. Happy to see Kaji alive. <laughs> Indeed. And of course there we were seeing, uh, was that the face of Lilith, or what was that? Hmm... Well, it's it's remarked about uh, by many fans as being uh, in Ezekiel. Uh, it's extremely vague, and trying to find uh, a biblical source for everything in this show is, you know, it's more work than I could bear. Uh, but uh, people people uh, do try. Um, you can look at it in many different ways. Uh, there's many different theories. Uh, uh, from various different faiths about this. You can look at it from a, a Zoroastrian point of view, if you like, about uh, you know, the, the sources of monotheism. and it's, it's, it's open to all these interpretations, much like religion is, because it's, uh, it's symbols that have been reused and um, recycled and perfected over thousands of years. And that's what, one of the reasons why this show is just so universal and so personal for so many people. It's because it kind of uses the same tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Uh, and, and in that theme... Uh I think what, what Anno and the Gainax artists have done is by pulling together symbols from a multitude of cultures, uh, they have kind of been able to draw attention to things. I love the cat pillow. Yeah, nice, nice pillow. <laughs> I think the cat pillow is always important. Um, that's Ritsuko's pillow, by the way. Mm. Um, but uh, they're able to throw things into contrast without being overtly blatant to the original intended audience. I think actually people in the United States uh, tend to get a harder slam from the show in some ways than in Japan because having been born into uh, a Christian-based society, which, like it or not, uh, there's no two ways about it, that's what America basically is, uh, a lot of these symbols carry a lot more weight than they would in Japan, where Christianity is not the dominant religion. Absolutely. And then we could look at the way uh, episode one is, is filled with uh, reluctant messiah images, the angel itself representing the reluctant messiah, giving back stigmata, giving back a cross explosion, um, kind of dealing with Shinji's issues um, represented in this conflict. Uh, they're powerful, but they don't actually have to mean, you know, it's, it's not specifically a Christ figure. Exactly. Uh, and that's why I think a lot of people will tend to read certain angles into things, which may or may not have been the original intent. 
Um, I do always wonder why, for example, uh, Chairman Keel wears uh, that little visor in a completely black room. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, okay, what is he hiding? Behind well, he's hiding a lot. He's hiding the the gateway to the soul. In the in the Kabbalah, it mentions that the um, the eyes of Adam cast light upon the world, so no no sin and no untruth can be found, um, or or can hide. It's basically all he sees is absolute. Where Keel basically sees nothing. At least, in, I guess you could say, in Shinji's worldview. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, we've got uh, just the entire concept of Zele in general and the meaning of Zele uh, versus the the meaning of nerve, per se. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you look at it, uh, you can use the um, ego, super ego, id uh, comparison, if you'd like, to see the relationship of it. Um, there, there's so many layers, but basically what it does is it provides structure um, that uh, is proven to be the human condition. I mean, it's, it's what art's been dealing with for so long. And, uh, and what, is, what is psychoanalysis besides entertainment from the 20s? I mean, it's, it's, um, these days it's, you know, it goes in and out of fashion, but it's basically a way of, it's, it's, a, it's kind of an entertainment. Um, and uh, this show, you know, uses the tools of psychoanalysis to just get deeper to the human condition, which all art is about, is, is reconciling the human condition, which tends to be suffering. And uh, Shinji's overall issue is growing up, becoming a man, dealing with opening up to other people. I mean, we see in earlier episodes, he is not defined at all. He is completely blank. Um, yet later on, um, he develops friendships. He... Um, you know, goes dancing with Asuka. He, you know, there's there's all these things, and he's kind of becoming more and more complex. Uh, and you know, we just look at this all all through that um, allegory. And now Shinji is basically lost in thought at this point. He's 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 inside the Ava. He's he's reconciling the different faces that he's he's seen, and uh, because he basically just took the first giant step to becoming a man in, uh, in the uh, figurative sense by uh, taking in the S2 engines. Now he has his own sense of potency, as well the Ava does, which is, in my view, a uh, kind of a, an extension. It's, it's his uh, mature form that he's growing into. It's a form of power and strength that uh, he'll, have to, uh, he'll have to agree with. So he's kind of losing innocence at this point. He's dealing with all these, these uh, sides of people he's found and he's going to have to be reborn. You know, he's, he's, it's basically the same as a, uh, a uh, late baptism in a way. It's, it's, he's, being, he's being reborn into the world with more knowledge. Yeah, we also have the recurring theme coming on here uh, of the bandages, of everyone being wrapped, of the wounds. Uh, besides the Ava itself, Chris Ritzko is bound, Ray is bound. There's, there's all of these things going on indicating that great damage has been occurring. And now it has to be undone. Absolutely. So he... he this is, by the way, uh, one of those odd little bits that's hard to explain is why is the suit floating there? Uh, well, if you look at it, uh, if this is all Shinji's worldview, that would be his, you know, as they say, residual self-image. So it's basically he is defining himself... Outside of himself, he is an Ava pilot. That's what people see him as. And that, so that's basically all he thinks people see of him is the plug suit, in a way. His insides are, are hidden, and you know, no one really understands him. And, like, uh, Asuka happens to be very proud of it. She always uh, leaves the, um, the, the sensors on her head as hair clips. Yeah, the, the hoo-hoos. They are actually technically called hoo-hoos. Hoo-hoos. Oh, excellent. Hoo-hoos, yes. Uh, we actually uh, never had a name for them, and Tiffany started calling them uh, hoo-hoos while we were doing the show. And actually, uh, that's kind of become... Uh, on the, the live-action motion picture discussions that actually became the technical term for them. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Oscar saying, uh, what are you, stupid? I always like to say, um, you blockhead. I always compared these to Peanuts characters. <laughs> yeah, we we'd actually kind of wanted to do that, but there weren't, the proper flaps were incorrect. Um, actually, one of the other volumes, the, the little special devoted to Oscar is called That Little Red-Haired Girl. <laughs> so... Okay, here we have uh, Shinji defining enemy as first something that's attacking him, and now he's, he's defining an enemy as a thing that's causing him pain now, which is, you know, his father. His father's the one who's saying grow up, basically. He's the one that brought him back to Tokyo, uh, Tokyo 3, to basically say, you have to, right now, grow up, go suffer pain, and, uh, you know, be a man. And what initially gets him to do it? It's a, it's a damsel in distress. So we see that women generally are the the 
thing that that gets Shinji to do anything. Um, even though he's he's extremely shy, uh, he's it's basically it's basically traditional chauvinists, you know, for the girls kind of thing. Um, and his father is the one saying, "Yeah, yeah, you got to do this. You got to you have to uh, you have to grow up and suffer, um, go out into the world and suffer." Um, so. His, basically, his outsides may be attacked. Um, he, other people are telling him, you know, the enemy or the angels, which are all very representative of his in, own internal struggles. I mean, the uh, the fourth angel, the second one we see, uh, is basically him dealing with other people in a way because he, when he lets the uh, lets his friends into the uh, into the entry plug, so he's kind of growing at at every angel. And in the last one, um, he you know, overcame something that, that destroyed his female friends uh, quite summarily and he ingested it. And, you know, uh, cannibalism, the idea of taking the power from something, you know, that's a very primitive masculine urge, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And it also rolls back into the whole religious uh, concept with the idea of consuming the, the flesh and the body and the blood of Christ, uh, if you want to draw that analogy. Uh, he's basically taking something into himself that wasn't necessarily there before, or that he hadn't found before. Exactly. And so here we see um, the same the same point of weakness that's existed in all the angels he's fought before is now revealed, and he kind of maybe he's starting to. Um, other people can start to see that uh, the angels are there for a reason. They are really harbingers of, of some message. There's there's a lot more going on here than a simple mega show. Well, obviously that's clear at this point, but... Uh, uh, Indeed. Uh, always find it very fascinating that for a show that's supposedly a giant robot show, the robots figure so little. Of course, they're not even robots, actually, but the fact that they figure so little into the story itself... Uh, you go multiple episodes where you don't have a single robot battle. It's really about people and the 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 story between people. Mm -hmm. And uh, my favorite quote is uh, somebody compared. They said if you compare Evangelion to a mecha show, it's kind of like calling Twin Peaks a cop drama. You know, there's just exactly. Just well, this this a little bit here also. The other thing I always find fascinating is everything is about being in transit from one place to the other. Uh, we are constantly seeing Shinji uh, and the other characters on means of transportation that seem to go on endlessly, endless escalators, uh, elevator trips that seem to take forever, uh, trams that go forever, mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. modes of transportation, uh, all implying that he's going somewhere, but we don't know where it is yet. Because he doesn't know. Exactly. Well, we're being uh, taken along on the ride. And this is a good primer for episode 25 and 26, uh, because basically he is suffering from definition. His environment causes him pain, but because of his environment, he can move forward, he can move back, he can grow, he sees contrast in things, uh, he, can, he can change. And so what we're seeing is change. Mm -hmm. And uh, now starting to understand the fact that he is being divined by the way other people see him. This is what they're telling him to do. You're getting the multiple voices. His perception of himself is based upon the perception of others. Again, going to the the last episodes and that wrap around. Actually, yeah, and basically, you know, keep in mind, Shinji is going over episode twenty six on his dat tape over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, twenty five, twenty six, over and over again. And yet, now here he is with Ray, and they're both going someplace, but opposite sides of the same journey. And it's 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 interesting that Ray is kind of his his uh, passenger and is coming along with him, um, and you can kind of see if if Ray is kind of the she's the false part of everybody. She's um, she fills in the gap of of uh, woman that Shinji is looking for, but she's fake. She's not real. Okay, here's. Here's uh, Shinji seeing the various different uh, sides of women in front of him and kind of inappropriately uh, <laughs> thinking of them. It would be really mm -hmm. awesome. You ought to appreciate your good fortune. <laughs> yes, you should. Ikari, and, do you want to become one? And so here, she's, she's being very clinical in the way she's saying it. Uh -huh. You know, do you, do you want this? It's kind of like... To be of one mind and body and soul. And any time Ray attempts to smile, he should be concerned. Yeah. 
And so here, I, I like to draw this to the very, very end of the, the end of Evangelion movie, all three of them layered over each other. Because if you look at Asuka at the very, very, very end, she's kind of sharing qualities with all three of those people. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we have Distrudo Libido graph. Um, it's basically showing that he's, he's uh, going too far into the self-destructive instinct, which is basically the thing saying that you will fail, and you should not try, and you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't do anything, because you'll, you'll uh, ultimately die. Or you, uh, it, it's tied in with uh, Thanatos, which is the you know basically the destructive instinct altogether on, you know, the anti-creative instinct so here's another primer for episode 25 and 26 where the definitions of people is being um, uh, simplified down to katakana <laughs> mm -hmm. oh yeah that was from Skanji there um, but uh Shinji isn't really seeing much depth in people. Uh, the, 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 the forms where Asuka and Masato and Rei were taking before were very simplified. Um, and he's having trouble reconciling all that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. He's still basically seeing, trying to see everything in a simple way. A childish yeah. way. Exactly. You know, He has not put that aside yet. And because of that, he cannot progress to the next step because he cannot realize that there's a complexity that has to be understood. Uh, the key to the Jungian definition of self is the reconciliation of opposites, the realizing that there is contradiction in the world. And this is the key to uh, Adam and Eve leaving the Garden of Eden. They enter a world of contradiction. I mean, Adam was initially bored because he was everything. He was a reflection of God. And so uh, basically there, he, there wasn't anything that wasn't him. And so there's no point in being. There's no want. There was no need. There was no hunger. There was only stuff necessary to exist and um, uh, when he asks for Eve he basically asks to have something taken away from him so he'll have something to strive for and the emptiness that Shinji feels is basically in the shape of Asuka it's if she if you view her as as Eve as I think you were forced to um, and I think is the correct interpretation um, <laughs> here we have Masato wakes up Shinji in his in his uh, introspective nightmare inside the Ava and now Shinji, the inner child, is dealing with the inner inner child. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, again, again, the deformed self that he uh, he's trying to define for himself. He's just childish and and simple and kind of like when you were uh, you know when you're in first grade, you can you can stay home from school and you know live a simple life. You know if you're you know you know play that you're sick. But he's uh, he's now realizing that he has to grow up. Is, is. An well, extremely complex dialogue coming out of Masato. Yes. And basically, it's just saying this: this world is is what you make of it. Uh, and if you st if you stay alone, if if you try to get bar back into the Garden of Eden, um, try to get back to the point of simplicity, there's no point in living. Is you have nothing, and you have nothing to gain. Uh, and you know, Masato understands. <laughs> mm hmm. I think in in a lot of ways, uh, the character of Misato is one of the ones who's least delved into in Ava. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of depth to her, more or less as a, as a forerunner uh, for what the paths the other characters have to go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting to you know, draw the draw the parallel between the the, the two generations, the three generations indeed. Uh, Risko's mom, Gendo, uh, Fizuki, and then um, uh, Kaji. Uh, Ritsuko and Masato, and then uh, Asuka, Rei, and, and Shinji. Um, I find a very interesting point uh, that, this, that Sadamoto decided to put in the manga, basically saying, uh, Asuka says, hey, where did you go on your, your uh, school trip? And uh, uh, Kaji says, well, actually, that was the second impact. <laughs> uh -huh. So Kaji seems very, very comfortable and very aware, um, and kind of what Shinji should try for. Okay, here we have we have Shinji passing through every everybody's favorite symbol of of birth, which is water, and you know passing through it, and uh, so it's coming out of the womb, um, and he is reborn naked in the world. So now he has think of it as he basically has the S two engine in him now. He can have a spine now. Mm -hmm. um, granted, we're not allowed to uh, appreciate it um, very much uh, with. Everything that happens in, in uh, uh, later episodes, because he's just he, he he's not given time to rest. Really, um, the the uh, troubles don't stop coming. Um, oh, and, and for some for some deeper analysis into all this, or just just good for any uh, any fan to read, uh, Carl Horn uh, 
a friend of mine who handles the uh, the Viz manga uh, of Neon Genesis Evangelion recommends that you read Foucault's Pendulum by Umberto Eco. It's sort of like a Da Vinci Code um, kind of book. Uh, it's just much cooler and uh, it helps helps you understand this. Um, also, the whole concept of monotheism um, is uh, is very important in this because that was the, that was the first uh, religious uh, style that basically had a well of evil, a, a concept that things can be evil and things can be good. Otherwise, you know, like. Um, uh, polytheistic religions tend to have uh, di- different characters that represent different human traits, but not a well of evil and a well of good. And A History of God by Karen Armstrong, uh, it traces the evolution of God as a concept through all uh, the popular Western faiths, etc. Um, and it, it helps, it helps, uh, helps you understand the traditions and yeah. how they might influence this. And Especially new- when you compare the uh, the Western uh, the Western religions' perception of God versus the the average Eastern uh, religion, uh, the biggest thing is that in Western religions, almost consistently, God is removed. He is in his heaven. And in Eastern religions, uh, are more about looking internally to find something that's there that can be nurtured and grown. Uh, it's not 100%, but it's a very, very common difference. And it, it's, it's very interesting... Um, that the angels come from some nondescript place, um, and uh, the way they attack, you know, they're they're not warned about it when they're, you know, ten miles out the periphery. Uh, it's when they, it's when the confrontation occurs. Basically, so they could just appear. Um, so they are coming from some some well, some some point that is different than than. Um, uh, what Shinji understands, so it's not. Is it, it's it's similar to the the monotheistic um, um, Zoroastrian Zoroastrian uh, concepts, <laughs> and uh, something very vague going on here in the soundtrack in the background. It's like, oh man, exactly where did he put that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and there's quite a bit that could be read into that as well. Yes, the the carnal knowledge is being hidden. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty literally. Yes. Um, so. <laughs> this is for you. Hmm. The first time if if only Shinji could learn so much as Kaji knows. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, we learn that Kaji doesn't know it all. In fact, Kaji makes several grave errors. Uh, so. But he's very accepting of that. <laughs> he's accepting because he 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 has hit that point of understanding and realizing that he can't know everything. He can only do the best he can do. Hmm. It represents one of the, the paths that Shinji could follow. He could become cold and, and terrible like his father. He could become uh, playboyish like, uh, uh, like Kaji. Um, and somewhere in the middle is where he really needs to go. And for once, we have an instrumental version in and of itself. Interesting. And there's so much that can be said just about the end sequence of this Indeed. show. Indeed, um, what what our perspective is, the the uh, the way the moon moves, all these things. It's just uh, there's so much. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's just uh, again, it's you know, what does the moon mean in so many cultures? You know, why is Ray upside down? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs>